Hey there, is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together, following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out his plan for us. So welcome to church and Merry Christmas. What name could contain such a glory? In the cool breezes of Eden, brought from the infant earth, one arose, the voice of his creator speaking his identity to life. Adam, man, and as heaven waited short with breath, the creator spoke yet another, Eve, mother of all the living. So it was with Abraham, named in the promise as the father of nations, Peter, the rock upon which the church would stand. The name called to life the destiny within. The name set the stage for all that was to come. And unto us a child was born. And what name could contain his glory? For he was mighty God, as the universe gasped into being, flinging rays of light from his presence to pierce the void, to shatter the shadows to a tapestry of color. And he is mighty God, shattering our darkness, revealing our light, our truth in him. He was everlasting father when orphaned Israel needed a father's touch. When we, with grief-stricken cheeks, need the embrace of one who never leaves. When we have lost our way to dark horizons, it is our everlasting father who lights the way home. He is Prince of Peace. When, like Elijah, we need the still small voice in the turmoil's midst. When, like David, we need the melodies of his presence to soothe our troubled minds. He is sanctuary within our trials, shepherd guiding us to still waters. And yes, he is wonderful counselor. God who gives counsel in the chaos, crafting disorder into calm and failure into beauty. He is a voice for the voiceless. He is dignity for the stateless soul. It is he who raised up a lowly shepherd to become a king. He who took the fishermen of Galilee and made them leaders of history. It is the counselor who redeems our lost years, breaking chains that have kept dreams imprisoned and joy confined. The name reaches across eternity, exclaimed by the splendors of galaxies, sung by the passions of angels, roared in heaven's fervor, exalted in creation's unfettered rejoicing. What name could contain him? What title? What soul renowned? For this is our wonderful counselor. This is our mighty God. This is our everlasting Father, our Prince of Peace. What name could contain Emmanuel, God with us, Yahweh, the great I Am. What name could contain the Word of Life, the Light of the World, the King of Kings, the Lord of All. We bow to the name that holds every other in its matchless worth. What name could contain such a glory? What name but Jesus? We cry, Jesus. We cry, holy is the name. 
Welcome in the glorious name of Jesus. We are here to celebrate his birth. Today is Christmas Day. Can you believe it? Merry Christmas. Hey, uh, I'm just glad to be here. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you got here safe. And I'm glad there's so many of you that came this morning. Uh, we weren't sure looking at the weather what was going to happen, but I'm glad you uh, made your way out and are here making this a priority to be here and to worship the one who came in the flesh, who dwelt among us, who lived a perfect sinless life, who taught us how to live righteously, who worked miracles that proved his divinity, who then gave his life freely, died on the cross for our sins in our place, rose again, ascended into heaven, and is coming back. I'm so glad you're here to celebrate him. He is worthy of celebrating. Um, a couple basic announcements, some things I want to draw your attention to in your bulletin. A couple things I just want to highlight for you uh, real quick. Um, we still have some ornaments out on our Compassion Giving Tree out in the lobby. If you haven't snagged one yet, snag it today. Uh, snag it today. It's still time to do so. Um, pick it up and, and look at the item and, and figure out uh, how you're going to contribute towards this because we'd love to have that tree completely clear of all its ornaments by the end of today. Okay, That's our goal. Uh, we'd love to be able to do that because it helps people all around the world and uh, receive gifts that are, some of them are even life-giving gifts in ways that they would never ever be able to afford any other way. So please consider doing that. Um, also want to encourage you to um, uh, consider using that, that uh, giving insert. You may see it. It's got a little red card in, in your bulletin reminding you of the various ways to give in your, your year-end giving. We just want to encourage that, uh, that even if you want to think about it this way, think about uh, in this next year, your first gift, your first gift to be given to God, whatever it might be. We're always encouraged to give our first fruits to him. Uh, let that be one of your thoughts in this next year. There's so many gifts we can give to ourselves, but, but God has done so much for us, and I believe the church is doing so much, and, and we'd love to be able to do more in this next year, but we need your help and we need your support in that. So please consider um, your year-end giving and that insert. I also want to remind you we're not having lift or small groups this week. <laughs> Just enjoy your family. Spend time with them. It'll be a blessed time. Uh, but then next week, I want to remind you also that we're back to two services, so please uh, be accommodating to that. Come either one. We'd love to see you there. Um, and the last announcement that I want to highlight here is uh, the No Regrets Conference. It's a men's conference. It's coming up in February, on February 4th, and I'll be uh, speaking at one of the breakouts, so I'm a little, little excited about it. Um, but I'm hoping, men, that you'll make it a priority. And let me tell you, what's really cool about it this year is if you bring someone who is a, a teenager who's around 15, uh, between 50 and 25, you can get $10 off your price. And they get to go for free between 15 and 25. So that's pretty awesome. So think about it. Um, we'd love to see you there. I'd love to have a huge group of guys going out to that. It's going to be a blessing and a challenge. The, the Men's No Regrets Conference, you can check out um, the link and registration on the chapel's website. Um, all right? Uh, more information is in your bulletin all about that. Otherwise, let's give all praise and glory to God. Let's go to him in prayer together, preparing our hearts for worship. Ready? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we come before you so grateful that you came in the flesh. You came and invaded our world, our worn, torn, sin-ridden, diseased and dying world. You came to us when we couldn't come to you, while we were still sinners at just the right time, you died for us. You came and lived the perfect sinless life, the life that we could not live. And you showed us your grace and your mercy, your kindness and love. And then you, you, you presented yourself as a sacrifice. You interceded for us and, and, and took the punishment that we deserve. Thank you so much for that. And thank you that we can know today that we are forgiven, that we are free. And we have so many gifts in you because you came. So we celebrate you today, Lord Jesus. We glorify you today. We ask that you be glorified in, in the preaching, be glorified in the singing, be glorified in our attitudes, be glorified as we engage with Scripture and everything that's happening this morning. Be glorified in our giving. Be glorified in everything we do. And meet with us here. Meet with us here through your Spirit, through your Word. We ask this in Jesus' mighty awesome, precious, powerful, magnificent name. And all God's people said, amen. All right, good morning, boys and girls. You want to make your way up front here?
Good morning. How's everyone doing today? Did you guys did you guys get up extra early this morning? Yeah, super early. Excited to be here. Five. That's a little early for me. That's a little bit early. One. That's all. I bet your mom made you go back to bed, right? Okay, so as you recall, we've been lighting our candles each week, right? The last four weeks leading up to today, we've lit and lit. And we've lit the candle of, do you remember what we, we've lit in the joy candle. What's another one? Hope, love, peace. Very good. So today, we get to light the Christ candle because it is Christmas. It's Christmas. So what are we celebrating today? Jesus' birthday. Isn't that amazing? So, you know, as we light these each week and we can see reminders all around us of Jesus, I have something here. Do you guys like candy canes? You can't have it yet. But so we like candy canes, but they can be reminders of Jesus, right? So let's talk about the candy cane for a little bit. So what do you think the white helps us think of or remember about Jesus? How he's holy, he's pure, remember? And in the Bible, we're told that that he will, will wash our sins away and make us white as snow, right? What about the red? What do you think the red means? Blood. Because why? Jesus had to shed blood for us on the cross. But he couldn't have done that. He couldn't have been our Savior if he wasn't born today. So today is a good day. We celebrate Christmas. So let's also talk about the shape of the candy cane. Do you know what a shepherd's staff is? They use it to, like, get their neck around the sheep and pull them in and bring them back, right? So we are, um, we're, the the Bible calls Jesus our good shepherd who watches over us and cares for us. And then also, when we turn it upside down, it makes a J, which stands for Jesus. That's right. So, see, there's all kinds of ways. And one more thing, if we, let me do this with one hand, if we put two together, what does that look like? A heart, and it reminds us of Jesus' love for us right? So this Christmas, whether you like candy canes or not, whenever you see a candy cane, remember Jesus. He was born today. That's what we celebrate today, his birth, so that we can live with him forever. Yes. There's a whole other story behind that that I don't recall off the top of my head, but I'll, I'll share it with you one of these Christmases. All right, let's pray. Father God, we just thank you so much for your son. We thank you for sending him to be born as we celebrate today, being born a baby, a king. And we just thank you that you loved each and every one of us so much, and you love each one of us today, that you sent him for us to be our Savior. Help us to remember just how much you loved us and how amazing Jesus is that we can have life forever through him. We just pray that you help us have a great Christmas sharing Jesus with those around us that need to hear the good news. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you guys can go back to your seats. If you are able, would you please stand and join us for worship? silence his glory in the highest the hope of all creation resting in his mother's arms a song on the horizon ringing through the heavens the long-awaited savior come to set the captives free Set the captives free, come set us free. Redemption. 
Father God, we thank you so much again for your son, born in flesh for us. We just pray that you help us to celebrate this Christmas, sharing your good news with all those who need to hear it. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. For some of you, it won't be very difficult to remember when you were little. Some of you still are a little. But you know what? Um, do you remember, for those of you who aren't as little, when you were younger and you got invited to a birthday party? Do you remember what that was like? I remember some of the birthday parties that I was invited to and I went to. Uh, for the most part, I would say most, most birthday parties are kind of predictable, aren't they? Um, they got your standard streamers, right? We got some streamers up today. Uh, you got your balloons. Uh, oftentimes you've had those weird cardboard dunce hats that you'd put on. I always thought that was weird. Everybody had them, and I couldn't figure out why. Um, sometimes they'd be kazoos or those party horns. You know what the party horns are, right? They're the lizard-type tongue things that come out when you blow them. Those are just weird. I, I, I still can't get past those things. Those are weird. Maybe you'd play pin the tail on the donkey or some other uh, silly games. Uh, if you're at a good party, you'd probably have pizza, right? You'd probably have some pizza uh, or burgers or something like that, and then you'd have cake, and then you'd sing the traditional happy birthday song. My family doesn't do that. They don't do the traditional happy birthday song. This is what they sing. Are you ready? A happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you, every day of the year. May you feel Jesus, you can clap. A birthday to you, a happy birthday to you, and the best year you've ever had. Woo, woo. That's what we sing and must sing at everyone's birthday, okay? So we're a little bit different. Uh, I don't know if that's trademarked. We learned it at our church growing up, and that's what we do. But maybe you, you've never done that. You've always done the traditional uh, monotonic, simple happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Ours is more fun. <laughs> but at any, at any given birthday party, you know what? You'd probably then be sitting there for a little while as the birthday person opens gifts and you're just sitting there kind of awkwardly while other people are watching and you're sitting there secretly hoping, God, please don't let that person open the same gift that I got them from somebody else, right? And, and, and you're hoping that they'll really like your gift and maybe then you guys will be best friends after this and they might let you even play with the gift that you got them because you actually wanted it for yourself. Yeah. Um, I remember those birthday parties. Of course, the best birthday parties back in the day were the ones at Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> if you never had a birthday party at Chuck E. Cheese, you don't know what I'm talking about. They still have that. There's one down in Mishawaka. Did you know that? I haven't been to one, but I, they still have the creepy animatronics too. <laughs> but that was the ones that, that, that were great. But then there were the other birthday parties, the ones that you were forced to go to, that your mom knew their mom, and so that's how you got on the birthday list. You didn't really know the birthday person well, um, but you had to go. And you didn't know what to get them. In fact, you probably didn't even pick it out. Your mom probably picked it out for them. And so it's a mystery. Whenever they open your present, oh, look at that. Hope it's just what you wanted. And then at that awkward birthday party, uh, instead of cake, their health-conscious parents bring out some tasteless, bland, sugarless cake substitute. Ugh. super awkward. Uh, I, I'd like to imagine that, that parents today do it better. I know party favors have gotten better. In fact, we do have some party favors out in the back. If you didn't see, we have sugar-loaded cupcakes in the back and some cookies. So, so please make sure you grab some of those before you take off today as we celebrate Jesus' birthday. But, um, you know, yeah, party favors and the themes have gotten so much better and so much cooler than they used to be when I was growing up. And yet... The birthday is still the same. We're still celebrating someone's ability to cling to the globe one more year, right? Well, with Jesus' birthday, oftentimes we don't have the same level of trappings, right? I mean, it's still joyous today. And if we went way back to when Jesus was actually born, the date that's estimated in the history books to be around this time of year, according to when he would have been supernaturally conceived. There wasn't the fanfare that we have today, right? Um, there weren't candy canes. Sorry, kids. 
there weren't a lot of these symbols and gifts and, and things like that. In fact, some people gave some really weird gifts to him. And that drummer boy probably gave the weirdest gift, right, to a mother who had just put her baby to sleep. You need a drum solo, Mom. That's exactly what you need. What's interesting is, yeah, every year we, we tend to also sing a lot of the same Christmas songs. It may not be the happy birthday song, but we do kind of sing it. And sometimes we sing it by rote, and we don't even think about what we're singing to Jesus. But I want you to think about something right now. Every worship song that we sing throughout the course of the year technically is a Christmas song. Think about it. And, and, and if it's a Christmas song, then it's technically a happy birthday song. I mean, we're always celebrating the incarnation. If he didn't come in the flesh, then we have nothing. We really have nothing to celebrate. But because Jesus came in the flesh and dwelt among us, the world has changed. It's completely different. See, Jesus' birthday is unique, yes, because of who he is, but also because it's the only birthday where we as humanity, receive a gift that we never saw coming. Where we receive the gifts that actually he deserves. And these gifts aren't cheap dollar store plastic toys. These are real, life-changing gifts. And I hope you'll come to see that Jesus came as the greatest gift of all to give gifts to us so we might use them for the glory of God. I love that. The greatest gift came to give gifts to us. And so today that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about how he is the greatest gift and also uh, what makes a great gift. And then we're going to celebrate the many gifts. You see some of these presents labeled up here. They're also in your outline as well. These are some of the many gifts that God gives us just on top of Jesus. I mean, there's gift upon gift, grace upon grace, on top of just even giving us Jesus. And as we're going through this today, I want to challenge you to examine if you've truly received the gift of God and what you're doing with it now. What are you doing with it if you've truly received it? What have you done and what will you do with Jesus who came as the greatest gift of all. That's our first point today. Now, you know if anybody claims, I'm God's gift to the world, right? You know if anyone dare claims that, you know they're arrogant, uh, you know they're probably deluded, uh, probably a little confused, um, because what makes them so good, right? How could anyone be that special that they're like, yeah, I'm God's gift to the world, baby? Jesus is. Jesus is God's gift to the world. And, and, and when he says it, it, it makes a lot of sense. In fact, he actually does lay claim to this. He basically says it to Nicodemus in John 3, 16 through 18. This is what he tells him. This teacher of the law, he says, For God, you know this one, right? For God so loved the what? World that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his world, son into the world to, to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in God's one and only Son. Just to be clear on this, we're condemned in our sins. And if we do not trust in God's one and only Son who came as a gift, then we remain condemned in our sins. Okay? But through Christ, we can be forgiven. We'll talk more about that as we go through this because... Um, the way that verse 16 could also be translated, you've heard me say this before, uh, it says, in this way or to this extent, God loved the world. To this great end, to this, to this amazing display of love, this is how God loves you. He gave his one and only begotten son. Begotten, not made, an important theological distinction. If you want to learn more about that, we can talk about it another time. It means that he's not like you and I, in the exact same way, he's a miraculous birth. Um, but can you imagine? Can you imagine giving your child as a sacrifice for the sins of mankind? Can you imagine doing that? Wouldn't that be crazy to think about? I mean, 
I don't think I love people enough for that. I mean that in all honesty, no humor there. I don't think I love people enough that even though we don't presently have kids, I don't think I could give my son as a sacrifice for people I don't know, for people who essentially are my enemies. You see, that's actually the thing here. Um, <laughs> it's difficult to, to love, let alone like some people that much, but Jesus loved us so much. God in Christ loved us so much that he gave us a gift, gave the gift to people who weren't even his friends, who were separated by sin from God and were enemies of God. You might not think of yourself that way, but that's, that's who we were before, before Christ reconciled us. You were an enemy in your sins and transgressions, standing opposed to God's purposes and his kingdom. We've done things that we shouldn't have done, things that don't please God, and we've not done things that we should have done that do please him. And yet God so loved his enemy that he gave his only begotten son. He loved you and I. Not one of us deserves this gift. All of us have sinned and all of us fall short of the glory of God. But what makes this gift really a good gift is, is essentially the same thing that makes any gift really good. First of all, it's freely given, right? It's freely given. God gives it to us. It's not out of bribery. It's not payment. It's not because you are good enough. It's not because, wow, you did, you lived your life so perfectly. You painted in between the lines on everything you did, and here's a reward for you. It's not a reward. It's a gift. Big difference. You can't earn it. No amount of good deeds could ever earn it, and so you can't pay for it either, right? So this isn't wages. We do get wages apart from Jesus. Wages of sin. We get paid for our sin, and that's eternal punishment and separation from sin. But Jesus comes and gives us an amazing gift that we don't deserve and gives it to us freely as a free gift for anyone who would believe. Not only that, it's a timely gift, too. You ever get one of those weird gifts that you're like, I, my dad would give me t tools at Christmas. And I'd be like, I, I don't even know what this tool does or how to use it. You'll use it someday. Cool. That's nice. But a timely gift is one that you need in that moment, right? A timely gift is one that you'll, you'll put to use immediately and not just play with the box, right? So Jesus came as a timely gift at just the right time. Romans 5, verse 8 says, while we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. That's what we were. At just the right time. In all of history, in our lives, it, <laughs> he died for us in our place. What a timely gift. It can be applied immediately to you if you'll just trust him, that that gift counts for you. It's a fitting gift, too, because you know what? Uh, not like that ugly Christmas sweater that Grandma got you it, that doesn't quite fit. It's down to your knees, but um, she, made it, she made it with love. She knit it with love, but it's hideous. Um, but it's a fitting gift. This is a fitting gift. And it meets our deepest needs, even deep needs that we aren't even aware of. Needs that aren't felt. You know, oftentimes we, we feel certain needs. We need shelter, food, you know, basic essentials in this life. But there's a need that's the deepest need of all humanity that a lot of people aren't even aware of. They need someone to pay for, our sin, for their sins, to bring them forgiveness, to bring them brought back into a right relationship with God because they're out of that relationship. They need to be brought back into harmony with God and there's only one way to do that. They need someone who has credit in the bank, someone who has that righteousness credited to him, given to him so he can give it to you. Have you ever received a, a massive amount of money from somebody? Maybe not. Like an inheritance, something credited into your account, all of a sudden it's like, whoa, where did this money come from? It's a tremendous gift and an amazing su surprise. If the bank didn't make a mistake, you'd be like, who did this? Why would they do that? <laughs> exactly. But receiving an amazing gift it, like that, it, it's remarkable, but especially when you need it, when you are in debt. When you're in debt and you can't dig yourself out in any way, shape, or form, and all of a sudden your account is credited. See, that's what Jesus did with righteousness. He gave us his righteousness, as we'll talk about 
a little bit later to pay that debt that our unrighteousness racked up, that our spiritual bankruptcy could never be satisfied with. But Jesus, the sinless Son of God, paid the price for whosoever would believe. And so is that you? Is that you? Do you count yourself in that number? Then you won't perish in your sins. That's the good news. You won't perish in your sins, but you receive the gift of eternal life with God forever. And I feel a little bit like a salesman because, but wait, there's more, right? You see, he is the greatest gift of all. Just knowing him and being in a right relationship with God, that's the best thing you could ever have. Even if all we had during this life was Jesus and we didn't get eternity with him, that'd be the greatest gift ever still. But we also get eternal life. We get eternal life with him forever and gift upon gift upon gift. These gifts just keep flowing. You think you pulled the last one out of the tree? Nope, there's more. There's more. Because Jesus is the greatest gift of all. And he gave us gifts. He gave gifts to us. That's our next point. You see, along with the gift that is Jesus, he also opened the door for other gifts. So let's take stock of some of them today. I actually labeled these gifts up here with some of those titles that you'll see in your bulletin some of those things. And man, if I had a hall like this at Christmas, this would be impressive. But you don't realize how much these gifts cost and how amazing they really are. First, there's the gift of God's presence. I just talked about that. Uh, but really, what this is, is a returning and a redeeming of this world, bringing us back, essentially, to the Garden of Eden, the way it was supposed to be when Adam and Eve walked and talked with God in the cool of the garden day by day. Guess what? Now, as a believer in Jesus Christ, if you've trusted him now, God is with us. He is with you. He'll never leave you or forsake you, Jesus says. And in Matthew 1, 23, this famous Christ Christmas passage, we have this amazing prophecy quoted from Isaiah 7 that we talked about a couple weeks ago. He said, the virgin will conceive and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Oh, God is with us. Do you know the significance of that? Do you catch that? He's not against you. He's for you. He's with you. Not only that, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, the, the Holy Spirit of God indwells you. He's with you, bringing life to who you are and who you, you were created to be. Isn't that amazing? And it all stems from his compassionate love. His compassionate love. That's what drives everything that God does. That's a great definer of who he is, according to 1 John. And he is so kind in his compassion towards us. So kind. In fact, Jesus himself invites us to do something that only God can really invite us to do. He invites us to cast all our anxiety and cares on him because he cares for us, right? To trust him with everything. What, what a beautiful thing. He's so compassionate for us that he intercedes for us as the great high priest. In Hebrews 4, 15, it says, For we do not have a high priest who's unable to empathize with our weakness, but we have one who's been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Having someone who knows your, and, and feels your pain and, and, and is compassionate towards you, so compassionate that he's willing to do anything for you, to draw you near to him, man, that's, that's an amazing thing. It's not like this lofty priest with a stiff collar who just stays far away from you. He's a high priest who empathizes, understands your weakness, but, but he doesn't excuse it. He doesn't be like, you know what, no big deal. Let's just brush it off. He understands how you've been tempted. Because he was tempted too, but he didn't sin. And because of what he has done, he's brought us forgiveness from sin. So we too don't have to be slaves to sin anymore. He brought us peace with God. What a wonderful thing that you can know that you have peace with God even here and now today. This was promised in Luke through the angels who sang glory to God in the highest. In Luke 2, verse 14, it says, And on earth, peace and goodwill towards men. That peace, obviously you can look at the world today. The world is not at peace, is it? But even in the midst of the chaos, in the midst of the war, in the midst of the craziness, you can have peace 
You can know this peace and have goodwill towards all men because God has given you this amazing gift. You've been forgiven of your sins if you trust in Jesus alone. Ephesians 1, 7 says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. I love that verse so much because he lavished these gifts on us. That's like he backed up the, the dump truck, beep, 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 and just like unloaded it all on us. All these amazing gifts that we weren't even aware of, but this amazing forgiveness that covers all our sins. It covers all your sins. And he invites us, simply all we have to do is confess our sins. As 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, according to what happened on the cross, and he will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we have this forgiveness, this peace with God. We have this, this grace and mercy from God, according to Ephesians 2. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. It is not of yourselves. It is a what? Gift of God. Not by work so that no one can boast. You can't boast that you earned it because it's a gift. By His grace. That means He's giving you His riches at Christ's expense. G-R-A-C-E. God's riches at Christ's expense. He pours them out on us. Giving us what we don't deserve. And also, saving us from what we do deserve. That's His mercy. He gives us that, such amazing gifts of His grace and mercy. And as I mentioned just a little while ago, that grace and mercy bring us peace with God that we can rest in Him. Not just someday in the future, but even here and now that we can know Him, we can be at peace with God. We're not an enemy to God because the Prince of Peace has come. We talked about that last week, that He is the Prince of Peace. And His peace will have no end. His reign and rule will have no end. It'll keep going forever and ever. So He brings us the peace of with God, bringing us back to a relationship with God. And then he also gives us the peace of God that transcends all understanding. That's real peace that you can have here and now. Because you can know. You can know that you can have freedom from sin. You don't have to be a slave to sin anymore. You don't have to be a slave to sin anymore. You don't have to keep going around those same habits, that same loop that you've been stuck on for so long, like a record that just won't stop, right? You keep going back and back and back to that sin that you know is wrong. You know it. You don't have to. That's the good news. By His grace, through His strength and His presence and His Spirit, you can break that chain. You can break from that cycle. It is possible in Him because we're no longer slaves to sin. Now we're slaves of righteousness. Jesus came, as Matthew 1, 21 says, to save people from their sins. He set us free to not obey our sinful desires, but to now obey our righteous desires, the way that we were designed to be originally. Not only that, but our standing with God has been made right. We are called righteous. In fact, we're actually called His righteousness because we've been given His righteousness. I mentioned that like a credit earlier, but I love the image of the robe. That his righteousness is like the cleanest of clean robes. And you may have filthy rags. You may have stitched together your own good works and all, all the best you can do to make yourself look good and presentable before the world, cover up your, your shame and, and your sin. But he comes with his gleaming white robe, wraps it around us. So that then when God looks at you, what does he see? Only the righteousness of Christ. What an amazing thing. How freeing is that? That now we can live actually a righteous life. Now, because of his righteousness, uh, we belong in heaven with the righteous one forever. We, we can receive this gift of eternal life. And by the way, I love the fact that this is not a gift that he's quick to take back. Have you ever known someone who takes back a gift like, they give it to you, but no, no, actually, they technically bought it for themselves. John 10, 28 says, I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one shall snatch them from my hand. I love that. He's got such powerful hands. No one can snatch them from my hand. No one's going to take this gift that I give freely. 
What a great comfort. What a great comfort. And you can know that you have this gift through an assurance of faith. Man, that assurance is one of the best gifts I think we could ever receive. In Romans 8, verses 14 through 17, Romans 8, verses 14 through 17, it says, For those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. Those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by Him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share with His sufferings in order that we may share in His glory. So you see, we're born again of the Spirit so that we, we might be led by the Spirit of God to do what is right. And the Spirit speaks to our spirit, giving us the assurance that, yes, you are a child of God. By the way, if you don't have this assurance, if you're not sure, seek God today. Seek God today. Confess your sins to Him today. Call out to Him today. Let Him speak to you through His Word and through the Spirit to remind you of the fact of redemption, that it's not about your feelings. And if you feel like you have this assurance, it's based on the fact of what Jesus has done, that you have trusted in that alone, not in your own good deeds. This assurance can give you the confidence and courage that you belong to God. And we need confidence and courage in this day and age, don't we? In this dark time, we need confidence and courage that we belong to him. And he's not going to forsake his children. He's not going to break his promises. He's a loving father who loves us more than we can even imagine. Yet above and beyond all this, the, all these things that accompany salvation, he goes above and beyond and gives us spiritual gifts. That's the big green one right there they labeled. Spiritual gifts, man. I don't know if you realize this, but God has gifted every believer with spiritual gifts for a distinct purpose. For serving him. And I could go into the great list of all the spiritual gifts in Romans and in 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14. There's so many references about these spiritual gifts, but I want you to understand that you were given something, entrusted with something, and you need to do something with it. You can't just sit on your gifts. So many people don't serve, aren't active in serving others and loving others and, and ministering to others. And I want to challenge you to think about this. If God has given you a gift, then the worst thing you could do is put it up on the shelf and just let it collect dust. So we don't have time to unwrap all these gifts listed in Scripture. Check out those references listed uh, in your bulletin. But know this, you're given these gifts so that you can not just be part of those who have been redeemed, but be part of God's plan for redemption in this world. So that you might ultimately point others towards God and bring glory to Him. He gave you these gifts so we might use them for the glory of God. Now, if I gave you a gift, I would hope that it'd be something you want, right? That it'd be timely, that it'd be fitting, that it'd be something you'd actually use. Not just something you'd be like, um, I'm going to donate this or re-gift it to somebody else. I'd be offended if you returned something I got you. And I th I've, I've been thinking about giving this gift for you for a long time. I really plan that out. I really think about it. I look at your list and say, hmm, which one would they benefit from most? And so it would break my heart if I put my all into giving this gift to you and picking it out. But then you use it as a doorstop or a dust collector in your closet. I'd be deeply offended, and I believe God would be too, don't you? When he sent his son, it wasn't so you could just have him as an add-on to your life. It wasn't just an optional extra, right? You know, you, you upgraded to the, to the Lux package, right? That's, that's not what Jesus is. You needed him, and you didn't really know that you needed him, but you need him because he is your life. Only through him can you experience real, true, abundant life. And because if he is your life, if he has given you all these things and given you life, then your purpose is to give him glory, give him praise, to exalt him in everything you say and do. Everything. 
No division of secular and sacred. No division between work and home life. No division between school and, and hanging out with your friends. You are to live for God every moment of every day because of the amazing gifts that he's given you. And you're going to use every breath for his glory because you're grateful for him. Not because you're feeling, oh, I'm, I have to do this. God's going to make me do this. No, because you're grateful for what he's done. First Peter 4, 10 through 11 says, Each of you should use whatever gift you've received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, he should do it as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. You see, the real purpose of, of Christmas is not to celebrate the gifts that we give each other, but to celebrate and receive the free gift of God, Jesus Christ, and the many gifts that he comes with to bring us. Yes, we imitate him as we give gifts to others, hopefully selfishly, selfishly, uh, freely, hopefully um, uh, gifts that are fitting and meaningful to other people. But we're also called to give our lives for the sake of others like Christ did, to follow his example, to give our lives as a gift. Not just tangible things, but our lives as a gift. And I can't encourage you enough to do that. But one way or another, don't leave the greatest gift ever on the shelf. This Christmas, unwrap it, unpack it, dive deep into it, make a commitment in this next new year to fully receive and fully live out this gift that God has given you. To dive deep into it. Uh, get into a Bible study. Get into uh, uh, some way of, of learning more about him. Read the Bible through the year. Uh, find a way to dig deeper. Commit yourself to prayer on a regular basis. Don't just sit there. Don't let your gifts sit there. Don't put, just put them up on the shelf. You were saved for a reason. You were saved to serve. You were saved to love and to receive these amazing gifts and let God do amazing things through you. So receive him. Will you receive him? He's the real reason for this season. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, you are the greatest gift of all. Just knowing you, <laughs> being able to be connected to you is thrilling. It's awesome. You are so good. Your love is more than we could ever ask for. Thank you for paying the price for our sins, voluntarily stepping in and taking the punishment that our sins deserve on that tree. But thank you also, Lord Jesus, that that wasn't the end of it, but that you rose again. You rose again so we can be forgiven and we can know that we have the hope of eternal life. And you ascended and you reign with the Father even now. You're sitting at his right hand, and one day you're coming back to judge the living and the dead. And God, I pray that when you do come back, you'll find us all to be faithful with the gifts that you've given us. Pray that we won't just keep these gifts to ourselves, but we'll share them with the world. The world desperately needs these gifts. So use us for your glory and for your name's sake. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're able, will you join, stand, stand and join as we end our service praising God? Sing, and heaven and nature sing.
remain standing, and I want to send you off with this Christmas blessing. It comes from our passage today from 1 Peter 4, 10 through 11. I'm going to summarize it. May you go and use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards so that you may bring glory and honor and praise to him forever and ever. Amen. God bless you guys, and Merry Christmas. Cupcakes, eat them. Don't forget about the cupcakes. <laughs>